Good morning. Welcome back to the trail. We're in White Coppice Falls. That's what you can see behind me. We're on a 10 miler. Cover over Rivington Moor. And come up through the north part of Tockholes Plantation. Well, yeah, what well, the start of the day, eh? Yeah, White Coppice Falls. Uh, near Brinskull. Lancashire yeah quite a trek to get to or kind of get down to but uh, we're going to climb up and out now and start our path towards the moorland quite peaceful though So it's a Sunday morning, as you saw from the time stamp, just before nine o'clock. Pretty quiet at the moment, but this is a popular little spot. People come and visit the falls. And uh, you can park at Brinskull, just do a five minute walk to them. Free parking at the moment. So yeah, most people do kind of make their way up here just to see the waterfalls. Especially if it's been heavy rain previous day and get all the runoff but we're not we're carrying on through this bit of uh, country park heading south and then we're going to uh, pick up a left turn at the cricket pitch and start climbing up onto the moors the moors uh, and I'll explain more when we get there but yeah quite cool this morning bit misty but the weather forecast again it's come good clear blue skies when we get out of the uh, woods and maybe a bit of warmth today as well. I don't mind. Autumn's well on its way. And uh, this is going to be some of the best walking weather out of the year, I think. Autumn. Then we're going to hit winter. And we'll take it from there, eh? We'll see what happens. Probably the best part of winter is going to be January, February. Once we get Christmas out of the way. I expect it to be a bit wet between now and then. But we'll see. I do love it when you get this moss overgrowing stones. Shows the age. Some of this dry stone walling. It's beautiful man. So this is Wheelton Plantation and it follows the river or the, I don't know what you'd call it, Brook, the Goit, um, south to the smaller reservoir coming off Rake. So this is kind of built up around it, but I don't know the history of it. The walls look old and there's the remains of old walls just over there to the left. So I kind of wonder if it is man-made or whether it's been around for quite a while. It's a lovely bit of park, it's just full of green. And if you look up, the leaves are just turning now, getting that autumn gold and orange and lovely shades. Yeah, nice, peaceful. Again, good spot for the dog walkers locally. It is beautiful. Yeah, caught them this time. 
stumbled right on them. Three deer. Just a uh, oh, few feet from where I was. That was good. Don't think the camera got it quick enough though. So oh, again, late out this morning, but I'm not bothered. It's only a 10 miler. Wanted to make the most of this weather. Get out while the sun is shining, we've got a blue sky. It's only up onto the moors. The moors. And we should get a nice view from the top today. And I'm gonna to try my best not to point out the same flipping landmarks. After, uh, what was it? Where was I? Come on guys, Parlock. After Parlock, when we got to the top and fluff the navigation, I'm kind of keen to just get back in the groove of it, enjoy a good stroll. I've enjoyed these last few days, having the time off and getting a bit of a routine going. But, back to work on Tuesday. That'll be done. Which reminds me of a scene from a film with Kurt Russell called Soldier at the intro. Shows him fighting all these wars. And at the end of the intro it just says, he sat there and it just says underneath between wars. It's like I'm between hikes when I go to work. Even sat bad at home, I'm just wearing stretchy pants, waiting for the next chance. All right, mate. Yeah, get the stretchies on, wait for the next hike. Room. Yeah. My problem with these sticks, they tend to catch on every branch. Yeah. Definitely getting the uh, wildlife today. Anyway, quick look at this. So, white coppice there. That's our path for today. 
angles out more, Wheelton more with no, so we're staying on this side. Well, we've got Rivington Moor down here, we've already done all this. There's the reservoir we did the other day, if you haven't seen the video of it. We've got Belmont. It's our winter hills over here. So we've covered all that area, just need to cover that now. That's today's plan. If you haven't seen any other videos, go and have a look, check them out. I think we've thoroughly covered Rivington by the end of today. Yeah, so, we're going up there. I don't believe it, it's the same guy. It's the chopper. I need to figure out who he works for. Mountain rescue or something like that. Seems an odd odd chopper for mountain rescue. Must just be a private owner who likes to put the time in. <sighs> nah, it wasn't this time, it wasn't. Some green thing. Not proper low. Weird. Now he got jumped by a fell runner. Wasn't ready for him. Yeah, off it goes again. It's not the same one. Don't panic. It's not the same one. So I'm not going to do it, right? I'm not doing it, okay? But I'll point out one thing I've not pointed out really before. Big sort of grey structure with a point on it, right far off on the horizon. That is the Mormon temple, or the temple of the LDS, the Church of Latter-day Saints, as they prefer. They don't actually call themselves Mormons, we do. And uh, that, my friends, is a temple to a pagan god. And I mean a small G god, so I'm really not sorry if I offend any LDS viewers. Um, had a lot of dealings with the LDS, sort of mission work, and they did teach me one thing, which was to challenge what I believed, and made sure that what I believed was true, because we're dealing with facts, not just feelings, not just, uh, you know, I prefer this over that. LDS believe in works that you earn your way to salvation, as if you could, so it's almost as if you've broke the speed limit, you've been caught on camera, where you go to the court and you tell the judge, hey, I know I broke the law, but you know, I really looked after some poor guy the other day and uh, I gave some money to my mum and, uh, you know, let me off. And you know and I know that that's not how the law works. No matter how good you are, if you've broken a law, you've broken a law. So these guys believe that they can just brush that under the carpet, do a bit of good stuff and uh, wipe the deck clean. I mean, that's a broad brush stroke. If you're interested in what the LDS believe and what the... Well, how can I put it? Get completely, totally wrong. You can look into that if you want. There's plenty of websites out there. Uh, and it's one of those religions that's very easy to uh, punch holes in. You can find uh, countless faults with it. Some blatantly obvious, like uh, I believe that the King James Version of the Bible is the only correct translation given by God. Don't forget this is a translation into English. So... Any of the mistakes that we know about that were made in the translation that we well, obviously we know about and we're not bothered doesn't really change much they uh they copied out but well, they claim it's completely inerrant in the english language so it's quite an easy one to punch a hole in we as christians don't believe that the english version is completely without error we believe that the original greek and hebrew manuscripts in their original form were inerrant um so the actual stuff that's written, the actual information, is inerrant, which means it's without error, it's without contradiction. Um, we're not going to fumble over grammar, or well, the odd word here and there, but the actual meaning of the text is inerrant and without contradiction. If you can think of one, you comment below, and I'm sure you'll find a suitable answer. 
there are no contradictions and trust me I've tried to find them and so have countless people down the ages anyway I'm rambling again so that temple back there is worth literally a small fortune I am told that the uh, statue of Moroni the angel on the top the very pinnacle is actually made of solid gold and that the uh, turf around the yard and the area I mean it's very nice uh, was actually imported from Utah which is sort of their home state uh, amongst other things the baptismal font which is the massive sort of replica of the Old Testament version huge is supposed to be you know ridiculously expensive so the only thing going for them is the fact that they have special underwear which I keep trying to get my hands on I have to wear special underwear which I think is pretty cool and it does have weird Masonic symbols down the side so make of that what you will but I'm determined one day to get myself some Mormon underwear I mean, imagine showing up at the gym wearing Mormon underwear. I'm just kidding. It looks absolutely ridiculous. Looks like the old, uh, old style bloomers. All right, go figure. Now here, so the two grassy craters, oh there's four actually, these are like trial shafts, I don't know what they were digging for, but yeah, you can still see them there, so we're heading along drink water over towards Great Hill, sun's warm but it's not too hot, it's nice, perfect even, let's pass this little bit of plantation Good hammocking spot there. There's a nice hammock strung up across there. But yeah. Wow. Glorious morning. Not too busy either. Grinding. <clears throat> Must be a monument to Joe. All right. <laughs> Joe died in ninety one. Oh, these dead fell runners. I hope they didn't die fell running. It's got a bit of stuff here. Oh, if you've got that, sure, you get a bench as well. Yeah. Yep, he did. He got the bench. Oh no, this is John somebody else. Can't read it. In some traffic. Some more ruins here. Somebody's homestead. Nothing. Anyway, we're going up there. The Great Hill. Looks quite busy. Be right. I figured this Joe was a popular guy. 39 to 91. 
and a year, 40, 60. Huh, not that old. Oh. Anyway, I'll have a snack. Skinny whip. Not a Havla bar, Harbour. Like the last time. Uh, before we head up Great Hill, let these crazy ass fell runners get up there. I mean, you got backpacks on, full of gear. Don't know what that's about. Don't know what they're training for. Anyway, I'm lolly gagging. Just enjoying my morning. So that was Great Hill, and it was quite crowded. Interesting group, but uh, just looking, there's a fell runner behind me. Interesting group of a young girl who clearly was the one who knew what she was doing, she knew the path, and then was leading a group of three guys, all around the same age, uh, who had no idea what they were doing. One was in jeans small packs where she had a pack bigger than mine. I'm impressed. And uh, yeah, Keen taking the same route I'm taking at the moment, but they're heading towards Jubilee Tower, which right now I can see is covered in white scaffold. Still working on it. But yeah, they just find it odd. Uh, people pair up, uh, groups of people group up, just completely dissimilar. Let's imagine there's a whole bunch of solo hikers out there who actually, if they met each other, would probably make a good group. Just bizarre. But well, that's the way life is, and that's the way it is. Eh? After the fall, nothing ever comes together right. Just got to live with that for now. erosion anyone yeah proper proper been worn out busy busy little trek so I'm assuming it gets some serious traffic which is a shame really so yeah we're zigzagging off Great Hill now and what we're heading to is uh, Tockholes should be familiar with from previous videos she's in Blackburn so we've literally crossed from the Bryn School side, also the Heapy side, straight over the top of Bangles Art Moor, Rivington Moor and all that, with no more. So that ba band of moorland, we come down on the Blackburn side, so that's why we can see Jubilee Tower, staring white. Uh, and that's why we're going to walk into Tockholes, and we're going to hit the northern side of it, walk up this northern side, where the last video where I was in Tockholes, it was the southern part. So that means we'll cover that as well. So, but from here we could go through Tockholes and carry on up to Jubilee Tower. But obviously we're not going to do that again. No need to. Not today. So we're on the five mile mark easily. Might look for somewhere just to have a brew. I have a sandwich. Don't know if I'm feeling it yet. I'll see. So a bit of road walking now. We're just going to follow the road up. And there's a footpath off to my right. And that's going to take us into Tockholes. I could have gone earlier to a right-hand turn back there. But I think our 
band of little walkers went for their that would take us to Holland's Head Ruins, which we've already filmed. And uh, yeah, might as well just cut that corner off and carry on. So, stick to the route. We'll head up into Tockholes, we'll go up to Ryle Fold. And I might even break off for an ice cream or a cup of tea. I didn't get one last time because the ice cream guy wasn't there. So, we'll take it, play it by ear as usual, see how I feel a bit nearer the time. Oh, we do like a bit of fly tipping. How oh, lovely. Anyway, we've come from there. I'm going to go down here into tock holes. Beautiful Tockholms plantation. Busy because it's a Sunday afternoon. But we're just heading north. And I saw our group of friends again. They hadn't gone the direction I thought. Just had my lunch sat there, people came and went, delightful. So that was Roddlesworth Reservoir and we're just going to head around its northern side and start heading west. Small, like three miles where people after people after people after people. I'm quite busy today. Anyway, we're out of the reservoir. I'm going to pick up the main road, and then that's it. Short drop, short drop, short drop into uh, Brinskull where we parked. So yeah, I mean, reservoir behind me. Whoa, it's got a bit cool. The wind's coming, but I don't really feel it because I've got a bit of a pace on. And, uh, yeah. The day. I do like this part of the trail because the start of the other walks from here. It's a lovely way to start the trail. I'm going to go in that way. Kind of well overdue one of these. I've done it for a while. 
Missed it on the last one. Mainly because I was so confused by the map. Oh, sorry. Oh, we've got to go in here. Definitely do not have that bad boy. Look at that. Get in there. Get that scam later. So, a bit of a boring bit. Bit of road. Not much happening. Busy because everybody parks down here so we can go walking. Sheep. Kind of long for the super sour flavour again. Grumpy face. <laughs> Would you believe it? Peace and quiet. Except for the cockerel crowing. <laughs> so yeah, not a bad little trail, is it? A bit busy in peak time. I mean, it's a Sunday afternoon, so what do you expect? Well, yeah, we're gonna take this road back down into Brinskull. Let this car go past. Can I, can I hear me? And then we're back to the car. So, 10 miles. Kind of gentle walk today, just to make the most of the weather. Nice views over there. I'm not gonna say what can see. Not going to mention a landmark, nothing. So, yeah, and what's that? Sunday, so I'm off tomorrow, do some editing, chill out a bit, let my legs rest. They've been beasted this week, what with the gym and getting out. I mean, that Parlick fell one really did beast my legs on that. So, yeah, we got to have a bit of a rest and then back to work Tuesday. So, all good next weekend to myself, figure out what I'm going to do with it. Summer when you stop hiking. To check out the means. A friend of mine sends me like 30 a day, sometimes 60. I just read the first one and then I was like, nope, I'm gonna have to look at all 29. Then I got overtook by a couple hiking. They have no means. Paul McCartney. So my tuna sweet corn sandwich was a disappointment. I've got this bad boy, the indulgent shock toffee bar, 99 calories. Nom, nom, nom. Oh yeah, tuna sweet corn mayo. Yeah. I always say you should be excited about your lunch. It should be a morale boost. I wasn't. Well guys, there we go, 10 miles, don't think I even broke a sweat, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that, came back to the car just as the weather changed, it's gone all cloudy now, and gone all busy busy, so I'm going to make off, I'm going to get changed, take my wife out for lunch, don't know where that's going to be yet, but I need to get rid of that idea of the tuna salad, tuna mayo sandwich out of my memory, and um, don't know, Think about what I'm going to do next weekend. What's the next hike? What do I need to do? I need to go back and do Hayden. Go and nail that one that escaped me the other day. And then uh, there's three others to do there. Two, two, three. Yeah, to finish off the Bowen Fells. So depending on what the weather's doing, that might be on the cards. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for joining me this week uh, for these three videos. And I hope to see you next time. 
back on the trail.